Hello, hello, guys. My name is, my name is Banda Nifal. I am an alumni uh, from the cohort four of God Africa Senegal. And now I'm working as a staff and I am a volunteer liaison. So I'm going to give the floor to my colleagues and he go, he's going to introduce himself. Okay, hi, hello everyone. My name is Gladys Andy. Um, I was a Co-Africa volunteer in Kenya, Cohort 1, uh, but currently I'm serving as the monitoring, evaluation and training assistant uh, in Kenya. Great. Yeah. Um, so Gladys, may I ask um, if you can uh, a little bit share about yeah. your experience as a volunteer mm -hmm. when, you were, when you were volunteering for Core Africa Kenya? Okay, um, my experience was beautiful, mm -hmm. but I won't say it was beautiful the whole year because it's for one <laughs> year. So you go to PST, it's, it's wonderful. You're meeting new people, you're meeting, you're making friends, you're meeting yeah. other volunteers, other trainees who later become volunteers. Mm -hmm. But then the reality check is when you're posted to the community mm -hmm. and then now you have your own community. This is what you're supposed to do. You don't know what you're supposed to do with them, honestly. Because <laughs> fine, you've been taught during imagine. PSD. <laughs> yeah, for six weeks you've been taught. You've done community practice, yeah? yeah. But then again, now you are alone. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Your friends have left. They have their own sites. So there's that also. Mm -hmm. Like you're getting out of your comfort zone. This is a new community. People you don't really speak the same language with. So. It was a challenge the first few months, but then after that, you learn to to grow, you grow, you learn to challenge yourself, yeah. you learn to become resilient, and at the end of it, you're very proud of whatever you did. Yeah, as you. someone who has done the same service as you, I can feel what you are saying, yeah. but can I know what was your, your first reaction when you first get into your host community? Um, we went to my community. We left early in the morning. We left Nairobi at around five in the morning, mm -hmm. but we were going through other people's sites. So we, we went through those sites and you could see people coming in to receive them. Um, their host people are receiving them. It was during the day, they were happy. But now getting to my site, it was raining. <laughs> and then now the vehicle couldn't go all the way. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. um, my site was uh, like just below Mount Kilimanjaro, so it's a hilly place you must go up. Mm -hmm. And then it has rained. The vehicles can't go up the hill at that time, so I was told you have to stop on the main highway, get a motorbike, and then I'll go up uh, up the hill with a host uh, family. I wanted to cry. I, I think I cried. <laughs> did you cry? <laughs> I did. I'm sure you cried. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure you did. <clears throat> so we took three motorbikes, uh, my host in one, me in one, some of my luggages in, in the other. I was holding on to the other, my host was helping me hold on to others. Mm -hmm. And we went up the hill. But uh, along the hill, one of the motorbikes fell, like we slid through oh, the mud. The first accident. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, it was it was kinda hard. But then I think the best thing to ever happen to me was like I got there and then my host mother was a grandmother and then her daughter had come just to welcome me that day, then leave the next day. But the host mother what she did was give me a hug when I got there. I, I think it made everything better. Oh <laughs> yeah. okay. I can imagine. Yeah. It's always warm to get a hug, yes. a hug. <laughs> um, mostly from a, an old person, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know really what gave her the idea that because I'm a new person, she didn't know me, mm -hmm. it was getting dark, but mm -hmm. yeah, she gave me a hug and then we went inside and she prayed and it was, yeah, I felt safe actually. Right. Yeah. But was there something that you um, experienced in, in your house communities? that now, when you think about it, it makes you so proud of yourself? In the community itself, mm -hmm. um, I think it's the people. The fact that over time, the people became like family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because the first time I go in, I don't know these people. I don't know how they are going to receive me. But over time, you become like a daughter to them. You're, you're like a sister to some. 
you're like uh, even an aunt to some like they're small children and you become like an aunt mm-hmm. so i think that was the beauty it's something i'm very proud of that that uh, community is still like my family even right, right now right right great yeah. um can we talk about the activities or the projects that you uh, was able to implement in in your house community too okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, we have we had at that time we were calling them secondary activities so activities were many and they were varying so depending on the women group maybe we do so baking okay. uh, sometimes you're teaching them financial literacy mm-hmm. sometimes you're just talking to the girls in schools and you're talking about mm-hmm. menstrual health and hygiene yeah. uh, sometimes you're doing tree planting so it was a lot of things and i think it's something i'm very proud of in South Africa that i was able to do very many things yeah. and develop my skills in very many things mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I, i was telling someone that at some point I was an agricultural officer. Oh, the next day I'm a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like we said in French, um farm farm dos métiers. I will explain after what does it mean. <laughs> But um I can I can feel this name. Um um usually um the volunteers they develop new competencies. Yeah. But were you able um to define that the competencies, the skills you get during your service did you use it as an alumni um or another question did you just after your service um join God Africa Kenya as a staff or as an intern or did you work in another organization before coming to God Africa Kenya okay um i got into co africa immediately after i left my service okay. i actually knew about my role in the community i think um Uh, time I was launching my project uh, the country director came and she told me um I think I'm, uh so my community were complaining that I'm leaving oh so she told them actually this girl is not leaving because I'm going to give her a job to do monitoring and evaluation and part of her job is she'll be coming back to follow up these projects mm. and that's how I knew I got into co africa and from there I just went for COS and then I went home a bit and then I joined Co Africa. But I think it's it's wonderful how much I grew because even without the job at Co Africa I was very confident that I'd get a job anywhere else mm-hmm. because the skills that I had developed during my service I was confident I could just go anywhere mm-hmm. and be able to actually deliver so I felt I could do anything at that point right. so and yeah you do yeah <laughs> be yeah. sure <laughs> um, um we see a Gladys um who are very strong very strong woman mm-hmm. very confident like you said um were you like that before no we got Africa um I believe I've been a leader even before Co Africa but now I had trouble with uh being vocal in front of people. Oh, yeah, that's one thing I had an issue with because fine in school I'm smart, I'm a leader but also when you're in school like you are, you're psychologically safe because you're among students, mm-hmm. right? But then you get into the outside world and you have to deliver something in front of people. So it's not something I was really strong at mm-hmm. but after going into the community I'm talking to really big people you have county commissioners you have community leaders elderly people what used to surprise me is I'm in the community and then there are men old men old women they are coming to listen to me these are people rich in experience mm-hmm. these are people who have so much that I uh, I can learn from them but they were there to just sit down and listen to me like mm-hmm. I don't know how Or I your felt. Oh, you're just yeah. disappear. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Cor Africa might seem sometimes like a magical thing yeah. where when you come you you enter Cor Africa with a lot of confusion, a yeah. lot of question yeah. and then just like this and then it seems like all your fears dis- disappears. Yeah. Um who was it your your feeling? Did you have the same feeling? Because that, that that's the feeling I had. Yes, yes I did because Can you imagine like you've gone to this community you, you don't even know what you're going yeah. to tell them honestly <laughs> in as much as you've been prepared you honestly don't know what where you're going to start and what you're going to tell them mm-hmm. but now after that happening then you realize actually there's something I'm telling them mm-hmm. 
<laughs> there is something they are learning from me. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, it felt magical. Yeah. As yeah. you said, magical is the word. <laughs> uh, uh, I just want to just talk about well, maybe a little bit sensitive subject. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell it because I, I can put it myself, yeah. myself on, on the subject. Mm-hmm. Um, when you are a volunteer, yeah. sometimes you are judging the staff members. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the same thing at Kenya. You are judging the work of the staff. But now, when you join the staff, now you, you know that Gladys, I'm now a member of the staff. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the other side. Yeah. Um, what was your, your expectation? Was you feeling that the work was not so, so difficult? And then, bam, you start and you see that it's a whole different thing. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, um, uh, if you could talk to any staff member, we used to complain. <laughs> First three months we go into the community and then we go back for ISD1. Mm-hmm. Even before that, we were giving them phone calls. I think uh-huh. they got tired of us. Then we go to ISD1 and the whole time we are complaining. You guys are not doing enough. Mm-hmm. Community is difficult and this and this is happening. We don't feel supported. <laughs> You, you, you know, you, you, you know, you yeah. know the biweekly. We normally know. feel, and then you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Have, are the staff supporting you? Then you're like neutral. There, it's like they're not supporting you. But then right now I'm on the other end. I'm on the receiving end. Then I realize the amount of work these people used to mm-hmm. do. Because okay. even if I'm in the office right now, the office has grown. Mm-hmm. Like we are more than ten people right now. Mm-hmm. Initially there were like four people doing all those things that you are doing right now. Mm-hmm. And I sometimes sit and wonder like how they used to do it. So we are taught about empathy, but it was until I got into the office that I realized these people are doing so much. So yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I can tell I can I can I can mm, tell you something about the case of Senegal. Yeah. Uh, when I was volunteer mm-hmm. I think the staff was was not ten. Now yeah. we are 20, I think. Mm-hmm. And at the time I was volunteering, we were always complaining. There was our um, uh, volunteer li- liaison, yeah. Abdul Sise. We were always talking about him. No, he's not supporting us um, uh-huh. um, uh, the way he should do. Yeah. We were always complaining. Yeah. Uh, but now we have a bigger staff, mm-hmm. and that's the time when I joined the staff. Yeah. And Sometimes I just um, look at the the quantity of of work I have, yeah. and I'm like, I should um, call him and apologize. I, I, I think we need to do that or write <laughs> apology letters and post them uh-huh. in the office and, because, and, yeah. Uh, and then now I'm, I'm I'm always trying to when as a volunteer liaison, we yeah. are the direct um, contact. I can say of the mm-hmm. volunteers yeah. in the staff, mm-hmm. when they are complaining, I'm just like, calm down, Bandai. You did the same. <laughs> they will understand. They will grow. Yeah. Let them do. Yeah. It's their experience. Let them do. And I'm just like, sometimes when I'm mad, I'm just like, I wish at the end of their, their service, they had the chance to join the staff and see and what is the yes. real work. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what, what should you uh, give, what can you give as advice to the current volunteers, not, not only in Kenya, but globally? Mm-hmm. For um, to the volunteers, I think I'd tell them it's a commendable job they are doing, definitely. Because whatever they are doing, not everyone can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they should be proud of of themselves no matter how small the activity you do it might look very small to you but it's a lot from someone else's eye especially that community i never realized that a very small skill or Mm -hmm. a small activity you do with someone means so much to them Mm -hmm. so they should be proud of the work they're doing Mm -hmm. um yeah and, and be sure that whatever they'll get from this is something they can't compare to an experience like that get anywhere else yeah yeah because any one job will teach you to to grow in a certain way or grow your a certain skill 
But with Co Africa, you are everywhere. You are growing a lot of skills at the same time. So at the end of it, you can always work anywhere. Mm -hmm. That is the beauty of it. Like at, when you exit Co Africa, any organization can pick you. And with the skills you've taken mm -hmm. right now as a volunteer, mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. the world is yours. Just yeah. fly. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. And I should give them um, the same advice. Yeah. Just um, ask them to know that um, the service of Core Africa is, uh, I can say, a one um, lifetime uh, opportunity. Uh -huh. So now that you can, and now, now that you have the opportunities um, to be trained, to be uh, supported by all the staff members, mm -hmm. to be able to do something yeah. uh, impactful, positively mm -hmm. for the communities, um, do do your best. And uh, I I know that um, all of our volunteers have enough strong strength have enough competencies yeah. to, um, after this service, to be able to get any opportunities mm -hmm. to work anywhere they want yeah. and to run this world. Why yeah. not? Definitely. <laughs> and, I, and I like something you said, the mm -hmm. fact that uh, they should use this opportunity to serve those communities. Because mm -hmm. I think it's a chance to, to prove to yourself mm -hmm. and even to those communities that it can be done. I think that's one thing I actually picked from the communities mm -hmm. that I was in because um, many times it's very easy for us to complain that uh, the drainage is dirty. People are not planting trees. <laughs> People are throwing away litter. Mm -hmm. Like the environment is dirty. But what are we actually doing yeah. about it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think using that opportunity to do something mm -hmm. and also teaching people that they too can do something. So right. yeah, that's mm -hmm. one good right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's sure. Just yeah. make your part in mm -hmm. making a better world. Yeah. And then um, that's it. Yeah. Do what you have to do. Yeah. Be proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and make a goal. I think the most important goal for an Africa, uh, core African volunteer mm -hmm. is um, to say at the beginning, mm -hmm. I'm coming into Africa at the point A. Yeah. Before the end of my service, I will go to the point, um, why not Z? Yeah. Um, and so, what is your, your last word? My last word is, I think, to the Co Africa family, mm -hmm. because I feel like it has become like when you are a volunteer, there's a network of volunteers, mm -hmm. you are an alumni, there's a network of alumni, and then you are a staff, there's a network of staff. So I think, like, um, just to say thank you for such an opportunity mm -hmm. and uh, to network mm -hmm. and connect people across Africa. Right. I really hope it grows more and more so that mm -hmm. I think at the we end wish. of it we have <laughs> the whole of Africa painted core Africa. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, and uh -huh. then like now the amazing work to continue. It's community led. Um, and it's wonderful to see how communities now are doing things on their own. Communities are realizing that they can actually do something. So, right. yeah, mine is just to appreciate Co Africa and yeah. also the beautiful volunteers <laughs> and the have. handsome yeah. volunteers in the communities because yeah. definitely they are doing a lot. We understand because you are a volunteer, I was a volunteer, so we understand all yeah. that. Mm -hmm. but yeah, they are, they are just amazing. Definitely. Definitely. Amazing, yeah. um, so, just thank you to everyone that was watching this um, podcast. Thank you to for taking the time to listen to us. And then we just hope that you will um, take the right decision and join Con Africa, do your part for the development of Africa globally. So thank you. Yeah, thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> Till next time. Till next time. <laughs>